بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فما استطاعوا أن يظهروه وما استطاعوا له نقبا so yajuj and majuj could not scale this wall that was built by dhul qarnain they could not dig through it so this was an indication that they could not penetrate this wall so whether it was climbing whether it was uh, a, a a means but for sure allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us and telling us that they could not penetrate this barrier so uh, likewise when the people of iman do something it wasn't a normal wall but he had done enough research to know what was the capabilities of yajuj wa majuj and what was sufficient so just building a wall just putting up a fence just putting burglar bars just doing something because it's the norm that is not sufficient this barrier after even making it to such an extent it could not be breached she said qala hadha rahmatun min rabbi the search the figure was from the favor of allah so the fact that we can preserve ourselves our family our wealth to an extent where when evil when thieves when criminals plot then it is protected and preserved is a mercy from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a favor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise they were spreading evil and corruption on earth so when you have and you are in this condition it may uproot your deen and the deen of generations so for the preservation of our deen also this needs to be done then he nafi was made and it was negated fa idha jaa wa'du rabbi ja'alahu dakka when allah's promise comes and judgment day takes place or allah's decree takes place then it will come to the ground so the word dakka in arabic was described for a female camel's back which was flat uh, which was flat and had no hump so negating that no matter how effective we are and what planning and execution we have we should realize that that is only the mercy of allah and if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to fail then we've done what we could more than that the rest in is in allah's hands so if a person planned properly and and did what was needed to be done and then destiny overpowers him then he will say qaddar allah ma shaa fa'ala allah decided and allah knows best so the mindset likewise these people approached him so they had a unified mindset each one of these people could have decided our own territories we will procure and secure i'm worried about myself and my family so a situation happens we are reactive we say let's beef up systems what systems do we need to beef up okay we, we can get uh, uh, cpos we can get bodyguards we can get uh, armored vehicles how much security can you buy how much security can you buy when they will and can allah save one and all for a weak link and a weak spot so if each family allah has endowed them with different uh, asbab and means and decide we're going to beef up our systems how much funds are you spending on an individual basis and the question is will that solve the problem is it the immediate solution and when it goes down the line if they've identified 10 or 20 or 30 potential uh, uh, affluent people where we can make money 
more than cash in transit highs, then eventually they're going to spend money. Now you remember, let's say if it's a kidnapping and if it's just one high profile person per month and they're making three, four million dollars per month, how much resources are they spending, whether it's on uh, their own systems, whether it's paying policemen, etc., to be on their payroll, they paying, they've got access to a lot of wealth to breach your system. So you one individual, you one family with your limited thinking. Sometimes a person say, okay, I need to relocate. So firstly, we need to see, is, is, is our dean at risk? And where am I going? Is my dean going to be harmed more? So how far can a person go off the grid? Many people have moved and they've tracked them and, and still intercepted in the countries they've moved. So, and if not now, how many years down the line, if they come there and that becomes a routine, are you going to relocate again? So Hijrat ilallahi wa rasulihi. Our primary basis is preservation of our deen. The people of Iman are not motivated by dunya. And a believer is not afraid. Man khaf Allah, when we have the fear of Allah. And that's only our only fear. Everything else is insignificant. Everything else is small. Everything else is weak. Fire cannot burn. We've seen in the story of Ibrahim wasalam, the knife cannot cut. He tried to slaughter his son. The knife does not have the power of cutting. Likewise, water cannot drown. That is in the power of Allah. In the story of Musa salam, the water moved. So our priority is deen. So a believer is not afraid and, and, and shaken by halat and conditions. We don't buckle easy. So the deen, myself, my children, the generations to come, it can be compromised. So by relocating, moving, um, is, is our deen compromised? We are putting ourselves and our family for generations to come in those places where there may be no deen left. So the mindset of preparing, whether it's myself, my wife should be so skilled and trained that if I'm in a situation, she'll be able to protect me. My kids, they can protect themselves. So let's say you, you travel in from point A to B and you get into the car. What's the drill? Which child is sitting where? What direction are they looking? Are they maintaining and monitoring any vehicles, any strange people? Or when you go to the mall, what's your walk formation? What's the protocol? Uh, who's keeping an eye on what? So each child should be trained and groomed uh, to have tasks wherever they are. And uh, combined we can do a lot. So we don't ever want to be in a situation. We've spoken to uh, counselors, etc. For, for women who have been physically abused. And it takes them many years of their life to get it over with. So they go for training, for self-defense, etc. But mentally and psychologically, they down. So a mindset. Well, it's it, 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 it's needed, this, this, this mindset of, of not just walking into an ambush, um, making ourselves easy prey. So... We need to learn to take maximum benefit from every situation. Is it like when uh, a, a pipe burst in a doctor's house, he was forced to call the plumber. So the plumber came over, he fiddled around for about half an hour and uh, he gave the doctor the bill for $600. So the doctor was shocked. He said $600 for half an hour's work, this is ridiculous. It is preposterous. I don't even make that much as a doctor. So the plumber replied, neither did I when I was a doctor. Neither did I when I was a doctor. So to learn to evolve, you spend so many years of your life. Um, cut your losses, move on. Or what? What you need to do? But strate strategy. And we shouldn't wait when it's too late. So the doctor told the patient, I've got some bad news. 
and I've got some very bad news. So the patient now worried, said, you'd better let me have the bad news first. So the doctor uh, addressing the patient said, the results of your tests have come back. And they say, you've only got 24 hours to live. So the patient now again worried, only 24 hours? Gee was that's very bad, that's terrible, that's no time at all. What can be worse than that? What's the very, very bad news? So the doctor replied, I've been trying to reach you since yesterday. I've been trying to reach you since yesterday. So prepping. So we'll continue with the vehicle safety and security. So sometimes we have to park in multi-story car parks. Try to avoid that at best because there's, there's many ambush zones. So if you have to park, then see where uh, is the ideal place so that you are not uh, put in that position. So an important rule is don't ever be surprised by your own vehicle. That's a rule. So if you come to the left, you come to the stairs and people want to park closest to the left. So this is contrary to the mindset. Why? You should park further away from those points because when you come out of the left or from the stairs, you're not confronted by your vehicle. So the opportunity to evaluate and probe, you don't lose that and po possible uh, opportunity to escape. So when you get off the left or off the stairs, then try to go to another floor first, the higher floor or the lower floor. So come from another side, not from the side where you went in. So they'll presume that you went to the left, you're going to come down from that left. So they'll hide, ambush a person based on his movements. So if there's a ramp also, you can come from the ramp, etc. So you, you'll, uh, if you're coming from the lower floor and you can see uh, underneath the vehicle, adjacent vehicles, adjacent cars, etc. So it will not give uh, any person an opportunity to be hiding. Likewise, when you park on these uh, floors, now sometimes a person goes to the highest floor. Why? Because there's a lot of parking available. So you've generally those floors fill up last and uh, are empty the the quickest. So here again. Where am I parking? Which floor? What's my vulnerability? Then uh, if the base stations are manned, then try to park closest to them. Why? Because there's a human element of safety and security. So either you're going to be closest to the ground floor, closest to the manned base stations. So these all need to be taken account. Likewise, what vehicles are parked there when you went before you left? And which vehicles have come about? So, is there a van parked alongside my vehicle? A van that has a sliding door on the driver's side. Um, so, these are easy methodologies where they snatch a person, they uh, put uh, um, on a handkerchief or a cloth certain chemicals which will make a person fall unconscious, etc. So, whenever any time a person feels discontent, then uh, do not approach and, 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 and go by the strategy that uh, you think so will be for your own safety. Likewise, people from a very far distance opens the, the, the doors of their vehicle without inspection. Somebody could get into the car. Uh, when you leave in the vehicle, we lock the vehicle from one side. Somebody can be hiding and they open one door. As you lock it, all the doors will lock, but it's ajar. So you all know the car is open and uh, that's a possible great risk. Likewise, people are very careless where they put uh, uh, their parcels, their briefcases, their valuables on top of the roof, on the bonnet of the vehicle. So having a visual scan externally, inter in internally of the vehicle, you don't think so, but you should consider somebody may be in your vehicle when you're getting into the vehicle as well. So countries where there's a right-hand drive, uh, like South Africa, UK, etc., then uh, get into the vehicle with the right foot. So the easier way is you sit into the car, looking outside. Then you put your right leg in. If it's a left-hand side as well, you should sit 
facing outside. So your back should be inside the vehicle and your body facing outside. So you got visibility, you inspected the vehicle, you know there's nobody hiding. Now you're going inside, again you're viewing. So uh, visibility is important. Then a person gets into the vehicle. So the first thing you should do is lock the doors. That's your very first action. Uh, when parking the vehicle, do we do a, a, a nose park where you park the vehicle straight in front or do you do a, a, a reverse park? So people who do uh, nose parks generally, uh, it's a very dangerous habit and, and, and we shouldn't be lazy. So if you're doing the reverse park, you can see any vehicles approaching when you are taking off and leaving. Now you've got into the vehicle, you've locked the vehicle. You can see risks if you need to ram into the vehicle, your chances of getting out uh, are much more easier. Some people leave their keys in their car, etc. If the car is stolen, uh, they could be entrance to your house, safety, etc. Compromise. Likewise, uh, identification on the keys as well. Very dangerous. Rather get a, a tag with a GPS tracking if you need to. Likewise, in your vehicle logbook, don't put all your details, don't put your address, etc. Um, these are all points of, of, of risk and compromise. People are, have a very bad habit of leaving their handbags, their briefcases case, when they're uh, traveling, their cell phones in front, smash and grabs, all these situations. We, we will put ourselves at risk. Likewise, um, Nothing should be left. It's just a simple thing. Even a baby carrier, a baby carriage, a very old bag. Somebody's not going to know it's an old bag. So we, what we take for granted, uh, others may not take for granted as well. So um, likewise, in, in a situation where uh, you need to leave something in the vehicle if you have to, then leave a, a cap maybe at the back or in the dashboard with a police logo or put on the seats those uh, reflectors. So somebody comes to the vehicle and, and they, they, they may be tempted, but they see that, they'll say, oh, you know what, possibility. Likewise, when we're driving also, it's common road rage. So you, you, you do not know exactly the person in the other vehicle, what's his uh, mentality, what's his background, etc. So you, 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 you may uh, show a person a first, you may, you may uh, try to cut them off. It's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. That pay person may be suicidal, he may be on, on drugs. He may do something very drastic, which is not worth it. So you haven't achieved anything by, by trying to, to, to show the driver a point. So when we get to a traffic light, etc., manage the security risks and, and try to create a sequence. So in your mind, when do I get to a robot? When I get to an intersection, where's my gaze? Like when a person learns to drive, they say rear view mirrors, etc. That's visibility of other vehicles. Now you need to get into a pattern and a routine. So when I'm getting to the robot, what? How many meters before do I slow down? What's my distance between vehicles? Uh, do I park in the middle, on the right side, on the left side, uh, there's a pavement, uh, etc. Do I look ahead first, then on my right, then left, then behind, etc. 360 degrees, so your visibility, etc. Um, what other vehicles are in my surrounding? If there's a truck in front of me, or I come to a place where visibility is not clear, do I have a mindset of, of, of looking for, for perpetrators that could have hidden behind these things, hidden vehicles that are on the side of the street that are following me and it's not visible? So uh, in an anti-kidnapped uh, mudakara, they, 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 they say that changes in, in physical environment are very critical and uh, to be aware of an attack where it is quieter, where it's remote locations, where there are few witnesses, where there's very little room to maneuver, uh, where it's a hilly area where you cannot uh, escape, where there's narrowness, where, where you are forced to stop, let's say a railway crossing, etc. 
So each person on his route needs needs to be aware of this here. And uh, each person is profile already. So based on your profile, we shouldn't be have this blind mentality and and be oblivious of the situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect one and all the amal for today is to be persistent and, and um, uh, have the shock and ambition to practice on sunnah likulli amalin shirratun wa likulli shirratin fatra that for every deed there is a courage to do it but for every um, uh, courage there is a, 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 a disinclination there is a time where there is a disinclination so you have a courage to do certain amal good deeds but there will be times where we are disinclined so even if you are disinclined at that point in time your desire your ambition is to follow sunnah then surely you are guided like a person who's very tired, he's got some important work to do, he's got some messages to read. We know before I sleep, I can't sleep until I do that. And whoever is disinclined to Sunnah at that point in time, then he is certainly destroyed.